welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the first video in IB Physics Topic 6, Circular Motion and Gravitation, where we will be looking at circular motion, properties of circular motion, and vertical circular motion. Ensure you review our Physics Topic 2 video series covering linear motion, as this topic will extend the knowledge introduced. To start, let's explore circular motion. As previously discussed, the linear motion of an object is defined by its displacement, velocity and acceleration. Since an object in linear motion travels in one direction, it can have a constant velocity. However, an object travelling in a circular path, as in circular motion, travels in infinite directions, and so it will never have a constant velocity. It is important to recognise the direction of travel of an object at any point in its circular path is perpendicular to the circle. There are two types of circular motion, uniform and non-uniform. Uniform circular motion is circular motion with a constant speed. Non-uniform circular motion is circular motion with a changing speed. For your exam, consider all circular motion to be uniform unless it is in the vertical plane, covered later in this video. For uniform circular motion, the most common examples you will encounter are satellites in orbit, and balls on a string. In these examples, the main forces in effect are gravity and tension respectively. However, in circular motion, they are both termed the centripetal force. This force is responsible for keeping an object in circular motion by constantly changing its velocity. However, an object in circular motion never travels in the direction of this centripetal force. It is important to recognise that this therefore means that no work is being done on the object by the centripetal force. This is a common trick question in the exam. You should already be familiar with the concept that an object with a changing velocity is accelerating. Thus, we can say a centripetal force causes centripetal acceleration, i.e. the acceleration of an object in circular motion towards the centre of the circle. Since the forces and acceleration in circular motion behave differently than in linear motion, the formulas are different. For centripetal acceleration, centripetal acceleration equals velocity squared divided by radius. However, for centripetal force, the normal formula still applies. Force equals mass times acceleration. Although, we can substitute centripetal acceleration in this context, changing the formula to Force equals mass times velocity squared divided by radius. Let's consolidate what we have learnt with a practice question. A 640 kg race car drives along a 1.5 km long circular track at a constant speed of 25 meters per second. Assume the mass of the driver is 70 kg. A. Calculate the centripetal acceleration. B. Calculate the centripetal force and state its direction. For A, we first need the track's radius, calculated from its circumference. You should remember that the circumference equals 2 pi r. So, substituting in the values of circumference and pi, and solving for radius, we get 238.7 metres. The next equation to use is acceleration equals velocity squared divided by radius. So, substituting in the values of velocity and radius, and solving for acceleration, we get 2.6 metres per second squared. For B, the equation to use is force equals mass times centripetal acceleration. So, substituting in the values of mass and acceleration, and solving for force, we get 1,900 newtons, which acts towards the centre of the track. So, you now know about circular motion, and the resulting centripetal force and acceleration. However, circular motion involves three new properties you must be aware of. Let's explore these now. The three new properties are angular displacement, angular velocity, and period. Angular displacement is the angle in radians travelled. Angular velocity is the angle in radians travelled per unit time. The formula for this is angular velocity equals angle divided by time. But you need to be able to calculate circular velocity. So how is this done? Well, utilising your geometry knowledge, you should know the length of an arc as length equals radius times angle of the arc. So, applying the velocity equals distance divided by time formula, we can say velocity equals radius times angle divided by time. 
To calculate circular velocity from the angular velocity, use the formula velocity equals radius times angular velocity. It is worth noting that when using this formula, the angle of the arc must be given in radians. Period is the time required to complete one rotation. Using the formula for angular velocity, we can say the angular velocity for one rotation is given by angular velocity equals 2 pi divided by period. Thus, we can rearrange to find period, which is therefore given by period equals 2 pi divided by angular velocity. Make sure to remember these formula, as they are not all in your data booklet. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.